All right, camera's rolling. I hope all these three cameras are rolling. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, hello, ready. Um, welcome to a very special episode of Ichimi. No, sorry. <laughs> this is not Ichimi, okay. Welcome to a very special episode of Let's Talk About. We we are okay. Not on lockdown. I don't want. I refuse to use that word. We are under minimum uh, movement control order. order, where everybody is actually asked to stay at home as much as possible, uh, minimize movement. And so, as you can see, uh, our office is is kind of empty. Uh, there's nobody here. And uh, but we're here to to do the show. The reason why we're doing that is I think it's very important for us to talk about what actually happened in the past. A uh, few days. So today is the Friday, twentieth of um, March. Uh, what when we're recording this? Uh, it is now the third day, third day of MCO uh, Movement Control Order. Uh, that's what uh, people are calling it officially. So that's what we're going to uh, stick with. Uh, we refuse to call it a lockdown. We refuse to call it a shutdown because it is not. People can still move around. There are a lot of things in terms of like the nuances. Things are happening, uh, and I, I don't know from from the the what's going on in the past three days. I'm not sure whether things are getting better or they're getting worse. Uh, yesterday, a whole busload uh, of people are possibly exposed to a corona uh, COVID-19 uh, positive patient. Uh, we don't know what the outcome that of that. Today, uh, cases were 100. Uh, 100 cases today? Uh, today is not out yet, but yesterday oh, was yesterday. 110. Yesterday, yesterday was, this decline. Yeah. was a decline. Yeah, but still, still three digits. Okay. Yeah. In any case, we're not going to talk about the stats, but we're going to talk about what is going on in Malaysia. Why is it difficult for everybody to, to, to adhere to the MCO? Why is it so difficult for Malaysians to listen to instructions? Why was there like a huge traffic jam uh, the night after the, the MCO? Night the night, no, the night. Uh, after the MCO was announced mm, okay. uh, and the night before the MCO actually took into effect. Now, some Malaysians, it's easy to put the blame on, oh, these are not so smart people that are trying to make trouble or these are not so smart people that are trying to just not listen to the government and, and things like that. It's, it's, it's quick and simple to, 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 pass, to, to pass judgment on that. But what we want to talk about today is like, it's actually more complicated than that because we're talking about reaching out to over 30 million Malaysians and it's very easy to get people confused if the messaging is not clear. So the question here is that, is the, what, was the government to blame with regards to all this that's happening right now? Are they, is the MCO the right thing to do? And if it is, what can and can we not do during the MCO and how can we make it better? All right, so with me is obviously Alex and he's been covering on the MCO topic. Actually, uh, you can get a lot of uh, COVID-19 news, uh, MCO news on SoichiShow.com. We do a lot of fact-checking uh, and rechecking and making sure that all the information that we, we post on our website is up-to-date and is updated if any new information it comes into light. Uh, but before we go into the topic, I just want to make uh, remind everybody that we're on podcast. So you can find us on Spotify, Switcher, Anchor, wherever you listen to your podcast. Just, just, just search for sorrychincha.com and look for the show LTA and we're there. Okay, so let's uh, right, uh, right now get down to what we're talking about. So Alex, what is the whole situation right now? What's going on? Okay, so recently there's always a, there's a huge spike of uh, COVID-19 cases in Malaysia mm. up to a point that if we don't do anything, it's going to get really bad, mm. like as bad as Italy and mm. Europe and all that. So the government has announced uh, that we are going to be imposing a movement control order. Mm. So basically that, okay, like you said, let's not call it a lockdown. It's more like um, restricted to reduce the number of movement in Malaysia, to reduce people from moving from state to state. Essentially, it's an instruction to stay at home. To stay at home. In simple terms, except, yes. yes. It's an instruction to stay at home, except you can do certain things. Yes. You can go out to buy food stuff. You yeah. can go out to buy groceries uh, and do essential things like go to the hospital. Um, but that's pretty much it. You can't go to work. Schools are closed. 
basically everybody stay at home. Yeah, yeah. But of course, there are some exemptions. So um, the country is still running. Mm. Some essential business are still running. So like telecommunications are still running, broadcast services are still running. You can get TV, radio, um, essential items like you know food, soul market, wet markets. They're still operational. So you still can get food. So don't need to panic buy and all that. Don't stock up goods unnecessary because mm. you still can get them from your normal stores. Mm. So no issues about that. The only thing is that the real reason why we have this uh, MCO is so that you want to reduce the potential increase or spike of new cases. So how to do that is, like you said, to flatten the curve. So everyone stays at home. So everyone's isolated, reduce exposure. And with that, we hope to see the number of new cases on a daily basis decline. And so far in the three days, um, we've seen some positive signs. Um, I think the worst one was, I think on the weekend, we got 190 cases. Mm. But uh, I think as of yesterday, we got like, I think about 110, 115 cases. So there is a, a, a sign of uh, improvement there. So, so with this new order, we hopefully within two weeks, we can maybe bring it down even further. Mm. But for that to work, we need the cooperation of all Malaysians, like yeah. you said. Yeah. If you are still going, going out to hang out in a mama and all that, or go to the parks in large groups, it's not going to work. Yeah. And if, you're going to, if it is not going to work, mm. we could potentially see a prolonged extension of the MCO. Yeah, sure. And that's going to be hard for all Malaysians. So yeah. in a way, let's bear this together for two weeks. Mm. You can't do this for two weeks, this could be extended to a month or two months. Yeah. Like I think in China, they did it for two months. For 60 days. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. ideally, let's work together and solve it within this time frame. Yeah. So here's yeah. what I don't understand, right? So imagine, okay, everybody that is undergoing MCO right now, you guys can feel the disruption that this order is putting on in our lives right um, for for business owners for restaurant owners for people who are uh, who have their own businesses it's already quite difficult uh, it is these two weeks people are not buying things they're not going to restaurants a lot of restaurant staffs are being put on hold and they're not getting paid so it is obviously not a joke um, Okay, to a certain degree, let's start from the beginning. I agree to the government's effort in, call, in calling out this order. I agree that people needs to be, need to be isolated. Um, okay, I don't want to seem like I'm pointing the finger at one group of people, but uh, one the catalyst for this order was, the, was because uh, there was a religious gathering of 15,000 people. Uh, and among those people, a number ha were um, COVID-19 positive and they went home and they went to their families and they inadvertently infected a few more other people. Um, so why I brought that up was because it's a really good example of how things can go super bad super quickly. Obviously, the symptoms of COVID-19 is you have high fever, cough and difficulty breathing. To a majority of people, the young ones, the healthy ones, and people who do not have underlying diseases like asthma or heart problems or whatever, essentially this is fine. Uh, you probably need to fight this for a couple of weeks, need to make sure your fluid levels are up, uh, need to make sure that your antibody is strong, you should be fine. I'm not saying I'm a doctor, but essentially that's how they are treating all the COVID-19 cases. The, they treat the symptoms and they don't really have a proper medicine for the virus itself. The problem comes when uh, people who have asthma, especially asthma, people who are old and have, have underlying other problems like heart problems or whatever, it gets very complicated to treat uh, these people. And, when, and, and you wanna be able to treat these people, but if there's so many of them, uh, hospitals will become overwhelmed really quickly uh, and it's very easy to like bring down a, a hospital um, I, I'll give you an example so I went to University of Malaya uh, a couple of days back I can't remember when for a, for a visit it was with my sister so I was chatting with the doctors there so I, I asked them uh, how was how is the case how is the situation right now in University of Malaya because it's it's a semi-government uni, uni, uh, hospital um, and a lot of people go there for all sorts of treatments and I was there and, and there were still a lot of people and uh, the doctors told me that the biggest problem with COVID-19 is not the virus itself, but it's with irresponsible people. Uh, in this case, because we're in Malaysia, it's irresponsible Malaysians. A number of cases came in where uh, patients have fever. They don't know yet whether they are COVID-19 positive or not. They have fever 
and when they were questioned whether they have or have been in contact directly or indirectly with COVID-19 uh, patients, they lie. They straight out say, I, I have no idea, I don't know. Instead of uh, being careful, uh, being cautious and saying, maybe I have, I'm not sure, but I think you should just isolate me, they lie. And that. yeah, and what happened is um, in one of the in one of the days at the University of Malaya Hospital, one case, uh, one patient came in with a fever and actually was in contact with a COVID nineteen positive patient, but didn't outright say that uh, he or she was, and w uh, it was only found out later. And the hospital has no other option but to shut down the emergency department because now everybody's a suspect. What? So, yeah. so it means the entire crew for that time has been has isolated? Has to be isolated for two weeks. So you can imagine how much damage one person, one irresponsible person can do. It's, it's crazy. And this is not just University of Malaya Hospital. So I read in one of the news outlets, um, one uh, young person, uh, one boy, uh, maybe a young guy, uh, he, because the report said that this guy was working. So he balik kampung, he was in Kelantan and he went to the clinic and he said he had fever and whatever. And, and when he was initially asked, uh, have, you, ha were, have you been in contact with somebody with COVID-19? He said no. But when he saw the doctor, he said yes. So what, what happened was the doctor had to like take the person, put him in isolation. So the doctor took the person, put him in isolation. The doctor had to put, in, uh, put on the PPE, the personal protective equipment, so that he can check on this patient on whether he is COVID-19 positive or not. So it took him, I read the report, so it took him about 15 minutes to just put on the PPE. Wow. 15 minutes. What's the PPE? Uh, personal protective equipment. You know, yeah. all the masks and everything. Like the hazmat suit and all that. The, not a hazmat suit, lah, but you know, the, the, the pants, the gloves and everything. Oh, okay. lah, like double layer and stuff like that. So it took him 15 minutes to do that. When he went back to the isolation room, the patient is no longer there. What? And the whole kampung in Kelantan, this, this small area in Kelantan where this boy was, went on a wild goose chase to look for this person. And after that, I think an hour or two hours after that, so the, while, while doing this, the doctor was like, oh, I can't run or I can't walk around and my PPE is hot and stuff, so I'm going to just take it off. And then I think two hours after that, the boy came back with his father and said, oh, actually, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm having fever, but I have not been in contact with anybody with COVID-19. I just want an MC because I don't want to go back to work. Oh my God. So when the, so what happened was when the boy came back and the doctor saw the boy, he had to put on like another set of PPEs to make sure that he's not infected, uh, to make sure that he's safe so that he can take care of this boy. And then when the boy said, oh, actually, I'm just lying. I, I, I just want to get an MC, right? He had to take off his PPE. So your PPE, right? After you use it once, you can't use it again. So he wasted two oh my God. PPEs which are like really critical things because masks and everything is uh, in shortage. Okay, it's a long story, but my point is there are cases like this around in Malaysia. Number one with regards to the healthcare professionals is that people are not being forthright in informing uh, the doctors and the nurses where they've been, uh, whether they've been in contact or not. They're not honest. And I don't understand why we're doing this because we're... We're actually in a state of emergency. I, I don't, I don't want to say in the state of emergency, lah. But here's the thing: we're not helping ourselves, lah. What? I don't want to say Malaysians because I'm a Malaysian and I refuse to be like that. But there are a lot of people in Malaysia that want to make life easy for themselves at the cost of everybody else. And you know what's funny? When the outbreak started in China, right? It was. And was pointing fingers at China and yeah. say, oh, these people are not irresponsible. Yeah. How can you let them travel and all that mm. stuff, you know? And then why are these Chinese tourists still come to Malaysia? We should block them and all that. And now when it's severe in Malaysia, they're doing the same thing. Yeah, we're not... I think, I don't know, we like to point fingers at people. We like to blame other people. We like to blame the government. We like to tell the government, okay, the government needs to tell us what to do. And when the government actually tells us what to do, we don't listen. <laughs> and then we blame the government because we don't listen. Like, what the hell is going on with Malaysians? Yeah, so if the government does something, criticize. Uh -huh. If the government doesn't do anything, you also criticize. What do you want, guys? Come on. <laughs> I'm not saying everything that the government is doing is correct. 
But calling for the MCO is correct because if we do not stop this now, like what Alex say, it's going to get worse. And you know how worse it can get? Okay, if you haven't read the news reports, I'm going to tell you how worse it's going to get. Italy is like a friggin' hotbed of what's going on with regards to COVID-19 right now. The cases are even worse than in China. Yep. Because there are certain things. Okay, number one, um, Italians are not listening to their government. They're not staying at home and they're not, they're not, they're not isolating themselves. They're not socially distancing themselves. That is, and they're not reporting. Essentially, the symptoms of what's happening in Italy is happening in Malaysia. They're not being truthful to the, to the uh, authorities. Uh, authorities. They're not isolating themselves and they're not distancing themselves. And what has happened is that uh, the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The health system in the, the healthcare system in Italy has become overwhelmed to a point where they are now running uh, uh, like a wartime healthcare uh, process. What I mean by that is uh, if a person is past a certain point, they would just stop caring for that person and they will just let that person die. In Italy, for instance, I think people from the age of 60 to 80 or 80 and above, and above if they have pneumonia because of COVID-19, they, the instructions in Italy is to just let them be. So they will take the respirator out mm -hmm. and leave the person to fend for that themselves. If they can survive the pneumonia and COVID-19 and fever and everything, super good for them. If not, they're just going to let them die. Well, up to a point, they're just writing off those who, you have a low chance of survival, you know, you're right off. Yeah, That's you're, it. you're written off. Okay, so what the government did with regards to the MCO is, is correct. Uh, but what I disagree is the way the MCO or the instructions given were executed. So there's like, a, pardon my French, huge clusterfuck when it comes to the instructions given when the MCO was announced. So the MCO was announced... On the 16th of uh, March, so that's on the Monday evening. Mm -hmm. So, and then it goes into effect... At midnight of 18. Or the 18th. Okay, yeah. so what happened between then, the, uh, the, six, the when it was announced until now in day three? Okay, so when the Prime Minister announced the MCO, mm -hmm. so the instructions are quite vague. So basically, he bas mentions that, okay, we're going to do this because we need to control the COVID virus. And he explained that um, essential services will run and non-essential non services will close down. Mm -hmm. So he, he gave the description and definitions such as uh, supermarkets will remain open, hypermarkets will remain open, there's no need to panic buy, web markets will remain open, postal service will remain open and all that. But what wasn't announced is what can the people do during that time? Mm. We didn't make it clear that whether you can go out of your house, can you travel interstate, that wasn't clear. Mm. Until the night before, I think just barely maybe six or seven hours before the MCO takes into effect, the police came out and announced that if you want to travel interstate, you must require a written permission. Mm. So that created like a, a panic. A panic. Yep. So everyone was rushing to every single police station, asking for the forms. Mm -hmm. And that time, I think uh, some I, I was there. Yeah, you, I was you were at there. A, I was a, at a nearby police station, and I saw like a group of people there. And I'm like, I couldn't connect the two together. I was like, hey, how come there's a lot of people at the police station? Did something happen here? Yeah. And then I, 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 but something kicked in uh, into me. So I said, okay, I think I need to stop and ask. So I stopped my car and I, I, I went to the police station and asked what, what happened. Uh, apparently, everybody was there uh, waiting, asking for forms because they want to move interstate. Mm. The announcement was very broad stroke. Uh, I guess it's easy to, to talk about it after the fact, but hey, I'm not in the government. Uh, I'm not smart enough to be a politician, I guess. I don't know, but you know, before you make a critical announcement like that, I'm sure you have resources or you can tap into expertise to, to ask, hey guys, I'm going to announce this what's going to happen and what are our contingency plan. It feels to me like the government is just going at it as it happens. It's just yep. rolling with it. It's like, okay, we said this and this happened. Okay, let's do something else. Let's do something else. Like they should have announced the interstate and everything immediately right after that. I mean, it's, it's okay for the, for the, it's okay to even do it like a keynote style, you know? I yep. think they should, government should like consider having their announcements like a keynote. Like, you know, hello, yep. my name is uh, Mideen Yassin and I'm the Prime Minister <laughs> and uh, today we're yep. going to announce this. All right, I'm going to bring now the, <laughs> the police chief. Yep. He's going to talk about... What's the police yeah, going to do? Yeah. yeah. It seems that when they made an announcement, right, the individual uh, police agencies were not informed. They were not aware. They were not aware. So uh. I guess when Mideen made an announcement, I guess every agency were probably as surprised as we are. Mm -hmm. So I... So the, 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 that's the reason why I think that they made that last-minute decision. 
And obviously what happened was, if in case you didn't read the news, um, there's chaos at every single police station out there. Police stations, uh, people who try to beat the, the, the 12 o'clock deadline, so midnight of uh, 17, right? Uh, it goes into yep. effect on the 18, right? Yep. So that night, everybody tried to like really rush out and balik kampung. Um, and, yep. you know, so I, I, again, in, in hindsight, it's, it's easy to say that, oh, you know, they should do this, they should do that. But, but like, I, like I said, we're not normal people, we're not smart people, we're not the government, we don't have the resources. I think they can figure it out to say that, okay, if we announce like a, like a, like a restriction on moving across states, right? Yep. People will want to leave immediately. I think you can pull out the case study from China. You can pull out the case study from Italy. It's very easy to see that. But, yep. but it seems like the government is working in isolation, not not knowing this. Yeah. And it seems like the prime minister office is working separately from all the other ministries. And 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 it's quite it's quite challenging for all these new ministers to to do this. They have they don't know their. Uh, they don't know the people that they're working with, they don't know what their portfolio is, and a lot of the ministries have been just really quiet about this. And for those outside Malaysia, uh, in case you know, we recently had like a political shake-up. Mm. So the current administration is kind of like pretty new with the new portfolios. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. And because of going back to the police situation, mm. so because of that overcrowding at station, which yeah. is obviously a, a, a high risk for that COVID-19. Is, that is counterintuitive yes. of why they make the, the announcement. So, so I, I spoke to the officers like, okay, uh, I'm here to get the form. If I'm here to get the form and everybody's here to get the form, isn't that counter to what the order is, which is to sep- separate everybody? Uh, why, why can't the form be distributed digitally or why can't I put in like a registry? Why can't it be done online? Obviously, uh, I, mean, I mean, the officer uh, tried his best to answer all my questions, uh, but you can see that he, he also had no clue. The, the orders just came in. Yep. Uh, nobody was ready. I mean, it's weird. It seems like okay, the government want to, wants to put a degree of control, but if there's no clear and, 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 and direct instruction, people will just make up their own rules. Correct. Yeah. And also, like, what, okay, what does interstate mean? Like, there's a lot of uh, confusion whether if you're travelling from Selangor to KL, is that interstate? Mm. Uh, according to Malay Mail, they interviewed someone. Mm. So apparently someone requested for written permission to travel from Klang to Masjid Jamil in KL. <laughs> but of course, eventually, the police um, clarified that we, Klang Valley is considered as you know as a single entity, mm. so you don't need to apply for that. And I, and another thing that I want I want to raise up is that um, there's a lot of confusion with other ministries as well, mm-hmm. uh, like for example universities yep. and hotels. Yep. So for universities, uh, a lot of universities issued like a notice to all students that stay in dormitory leave the university. This is right after the MCO announcement, right? Uh, yeah, right after the MCO mm. announcement. Mm-hmm. So. Of course, if you're a student and if you're kicked out from your dormitory, where should you go? Balai Kampung lah, go back to where you yeah, go. Or else yeah. we're going to stay on the yes, streets. Yes. So everyone's rushing back home. Mm. So you can't blame people for, of, you know, of uh, intentionally leaving the state because yeah. they want to treaty treaty Malaysia. Yeah. Because they have no choice. Yeah. And another issue was the hotels. Mm. Because hotels were not listed as essential services. Service. Uh-huh. So the hotels are shut down. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, postings, I think by Genting and other hotels saying that, okay, you know what, all guests must check out Immediately. Immediately, yeah. before the 18. Yeah. So if you're a tourist or if you're like a Malaysian who is staying in a hotel, yep. you have no choice but to leave. And then borders are closed. You yep. can't leave or enter the country. Correct. So what about people who are living outside of, uh, no, what about people who are working in Singapore and Thailand? They have to come back, but they can't. And what's worse is that, I think when the ministry found out that, okay, you know what, asking the kids to go back home is a bad idea. So mm. I think the Ministry of Education or uh, some universities, they announced that, okay, Students who are staying in dormitories, you can choose. You can choose to remain in universities, mm. and that was actually announced like one or two hours before the MLC was was MCO. Take, so MCO was taken yeah. to effect. Uh, basically, communication and organization on the government side can be done can be so much better. Um, and I, I I directly blame them because there's no excuse. Uh, there there are case studies in China and also in in Italy and in in other countries that they can follow. But it seems like they're not learning from, from any of these experiences, which is detrimental not to the government themselves, but to the people. So a lot of people had to move around. Students had to move around. That, that cost money. People who were stuck uh, outside the border, they had to do something. Uh, I saw some reports of people sleeping uh, near the border uh, because they cannot enter. They have no place to go, especially for, for people who work in Singapore. They cannot come in. They have no place to go, no place to stay in Singapore. They, they, they just sleep on the streets. Uh, which inevitably increases their risk of exposure to COVID-19 in Singapore. I mean, it's not it's it's not done properly, lah. So we, we've 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 covered that. Um, I, I I guess 
what the government is doing is can can be done better but but i don't want us to focus on that i don't want us to say yeah you know the government should be done, should done better but we are not doing any better either uh, on day one, uh, we reported on eateries still being open uh, and people still, eat, still, uh, still eating in restaurants. Uh, I'm just going to call it, you know, people who are doing that are really, really not smart. Lah. And the eateries that open are also not smart because let me put this into perspective. Let's say the eatery is open because they uh, doesn't want to, they tak nak rugi kan. They, uh, you know, I don't want to lose money. I don't want to lose my business, whatever. You know, this is my livelihood. I need to be open. Okay, fine. You open. Let's say one of the patient, one of the customers is a COVID nineteen positive uh, person. Immediately, uh, if it's traced back to you to that restaurant, the whole restaurant will have to be shut down, probably for more than two weeks. Yep. You're gonna lose more time and money in uh, in uh, or instead of just two weeks, you're gonna lose a lot more than that. It's a huge gamble, guys. I don't know whether any restaurant owners are watching this video or listening to the web to this to this podcast, but let's all as Malaysians, right, play our part in fighting this COVID nineteen thing. And the best way for us to do this is to stay at home. But at the same time, again, I know it's easy to just discount all this and say, you know, why you have to all balik kampung? Why you have to move there, move here? Here's the thing: I think the government didn't take into account the types of people. And and the, the the demographics of people. So some people, they work in KL but they stay in Seremban. They work in KL but they stay in Melaka. Those people have to move into state. Even if offices are closed, they have to go back, right? So to go back, they have to move into state. I guess it can be done in phases. We 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 can settle down. So if if it was me, I would have told okay, people who need to move into state, move into state now. You have mm. two days. Then after you settle down, no more moving around. But what's done is done, I guess. Yep. You know. But also another thing is that um, during okay the during the announcement, uh, I noticed that it wasn't clear about the okay, the, the the definition of restricted movement isn't that clear. Mm. Some people think okay maybe it means that uh, there's no I didn't need to go to work, mm. so I can just hang around my taman. I can mm. just go around for a jog and a hike. Mm-hmm. So that again causes another set of problems yep. because the police found that there are people gathering, still gathering at places of worship, still gathering at parks and mamaks and all yeah, that yeah. until the point that on the second day mm. the Prime Minister had to come out and nag at Malaysians yeah. like do not cut rumour stay yeah. at home w- yeah. stay at home watch HBO and all yeah. that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and I think that's because that's partly is because there's not much clear information mm. about what you can do and what you, c- you cannot do mm. so on the first day itself the Ministry of Health actually issued like a clearer definition of mm. the, M- the MCO mm. so according to the new uh, statement which was announced uh, on on the 18. So people are, re- are supposed to stay at home at all times, except for five specific reasons. Mm. Number one, if you need to perform any official duty, because there are those who are working in the essential business, like you're working in telco, you're working in, uh, in broadcasting, broadcasting mm-hmm. uh, in supermarket, transportation. So transportation. Mm-hmm. Like if you do, you, if you are working as a grab driver mm. or grab bike delivery guy, yeah, you can still go out because mm. you're performing an official duty. Mm. Second is to go out to buy, supply and deliver food. So you can do that. Number three is obviously to seek healthcare. If you're sick, you still can go to clinics and to hospitals. And number four is to make journey to and from the essential categories. Like mm. if you want to go to the bank, you want to pump petrol, you want to buy, uh, I don't know, pharmaceutical items, mm. you can do so. Or number five is for special purposes that are permitted by the Director General. So even that, people are still not very clear. Mm. So today, the police came out and say. No jogging, no hiking, no outdoor activities. Just stay at home. So okay. that make it more clearer. Okay. So I didn't know that that we couldn't go to the yeah, parks. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that either. I thought you know, as long as I'm alone, I can jog and I can. As long as I'm in my house, taman, I'm I'm good. Uh, I'm not disturbing distance. anybody. Yeah, I have I have equal. I have a good uh, social distancing parameter in place. So I I I I have to admit, I went jogging uh, on the second day. Uh, I I didn't know it was wrong. Uh, until I saw the report on Sorry Jin Chow and then I was like, okay, you know, that's it for me. I, I, I can't go jogging anymore. Um, but, okay, as, as the instructions become clear and clear, I think, again, what needs to happen is for us to follow the instructions. Let's not try to cheat ourselves. I think Malaysians are really good at, like, 
you know finding like the loopholes. the loophole the jalan belakang or if i cannot yeah. do this maybe i can do this if 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 the park is behind in front of my house i think i can or you know there's there's so many permutations of this lah okay here's the thing okay while while i i i i put number one blame on the government for their communication and the organization of this mco thing they are improving and they are learning which is good um now it's it's up to us malaysians the people to to listen to the instructions and we are lucky because the government has allowed some degree of f- uh, flexibility and leeway for us to still have some normalcy in our lives you know we can still go out to buy food we can still go out to buy groceries we don't need to wait for like a supply of food to come and we don't need to fight and 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 and, and berebut and everything so we should be l- uh, thankful uh, and lucky that that a more stringent uh, control and order was not in put into place but i'm kind of worried because um as the day that we're reporting which is the 20th of march uh, 2020 today uh the the latest statement is that the government will be the military will be deployed starting from sunday yep but again the government has not learned because they have not specifically say why the military has been deployed what can they do yeah and and why do they need military is it to to scare us or what if they're not clear then we are like I don't know what's going on but they've already they've already clarified that it is not a curfew so I don't know I don't know why so like for example if if I want to go out to buy something from Sumo Market if I see a military uh um roadblock uh. do can I pass it am I allowed to pass it you know it's not clear so what's the difference between that and the police what's the difference yeah. it's not clear yeah. so yeah yeah so it's uh it's it's it's, it's quite interesting time I wouldn't say it's challenging I feel that you know our lives are pretty much still comfortable but I have to put it in a multi-dimensional way lah okay I think we're all lucky enough to have um enough space in our house and and and, and to have enough food uh, we have to also take into account people who are renting uh, people who are staying in 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 units that are being sublet or rooms with multiple people um they might not have enough private space people who are you know they usually work uh every day and so their private space is either in their car or on the com- on the commute or in the mama or in 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 that's where they hang out they only go home to sleep it's going to be challenging for a lot of these people the b40s the m40s it's going to be challenging um so i can i can only imagine lah how difficult it is to be and like i said it's easy for us to discount these people it's easy for us to go and say oh you know you all not smart lah doing all these things but there are a certain number of people that really have no choice if i don't go out i'm going to go crazy yep i agree with that so it's complex you know i guess what i want to say is the people who can do something about it and people who can stay at home please let's just stay at home i i i saw a video on facebook of this uncle he walk at a taman yep. and he's like oh you know i can be at the taman the police was telling him please go home please go home tell me nicely yeah and the police have been like very polite and very, very patient yeah patient with a lot of these people you know it's like all these people are pushing the buttons of the police and the military is like come at me bro come at me bro come at me bro <laughs> why do that man and then it's like when they are when they can full force right it's like oh i'm a victim please lah don't do this guys come on it's for your own good guys please yeah. it's only two weeks if you can if you can soldier together for two weeks and everything's going to be improved then that's it if you don't cooperate you're going to suffer much longer man yeah. i mean again um we have the 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 middle the middle income the low income the higher income the high income i think no problems lah so the middle income and all that there have been a number of incentives that a lot of the telcos and all that have been pro- providing can you give like a rough picture overview of of what people can get uh when they stay at home okay as of now uh unify for prepaid they're giving a uh, free unlimited data on LTE mm-hmm. uh through like a weekly pass you can activate it every week mm-hmm. uh if you're postpaid customer on certain plans you can get almost 1 terabyte of hotspot data okay. so that's great for people working from home yep. and for you do they're giving like 1 gig of data every single week wow yeah so that's okay. pretty generous uh they're going to do it for 7 weeks so 7 mm-hmm. weeks so that's 7 gigs of data that should be more than enough for most people mm-hmm. and uh for cellcom they're offering free access to whatsapp and also for uh Microsoft Office 365 mm-hmm. so that's great for people working at home as well mm-hmm. and i expect more to come up from other telcos as well and also uh, Astro yep. 
Um, all subscribers can get access to all movie channels. And if you're on a Astro Sports pack, obviously there's no sports right now <laughs> due to obvious reasons. Yeah. You can get access to all channels on Astro until the 30th, right? Until the 31st. 31st yeah. uh, Unify TV, mm. uh, same as well. Access mm. to all. Ch uh, they're different. Unify TV. All customers will get access to all channels until the 31st. Until the 31st. Yeah. So basically, you know, take this time to work at home. Uh, be closer to your family, learn how to cook or <laughs> yeah. start spring cleaning your house, uh, catch up on movies that you had no opportunity to catch up on. Use this time to do the things that you had not have the time to do. Make the most out of it. Please do not break the rules, guys. Uh, and it's good to see that the private sector uh, jumping into the band, uh, onto the bandwagon and, and helping ease the burden. Uh, I also uh, know that banks are uh, uh, granting moratoriums up to six months for people who have loans, uh, SMEs as businesses as well. Um, the whole country, the ho well, at least the businesses, the private sector, the government, the public service sector, especially the health uh, care sector, uh, the telecommunications, broadcasting, everybody is doing their part to, 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 to make this better. It's the people that are not affected, uh, not, aff not not to say not affected, but people who are working in the normal industries, we can do our part by just staying at home. Uh, and I think that's the point that I want to make. There's really no reason for us to, to make this any worse. And I'm going to be like super pissed off if I'm the one that stays at home for two weeks and not do anything, right? And at the end of the 31st uh, March, uh, Muhyiddin Yassin is going to go on stage and say, look, this is not working, we're going to extend this for another two weeks it's not gonna it's not gonna be good for a lot of people uh, you know? would you rather suffer two weeks or suffer like even longer yeah 60 days or worse worse or yeah. worse or be like italy please just look at italy and oh okay here's also the other thing the the result of all this uh, misinformation and everything like that right a lot of people are now spreading there's tons of fake news and unconfirmed news out there. Obviously, number one, um, you can come to soyjinshaw.com to get the latest verified fact-checked news on everything related to COVID-19 and technology and everything like that. But we also urge you to go to the official channel. So um, I think we'll put it up on, 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 uh, in the YouTube description uh, and also on this video. Uh, for podcasters, you can come to our website. Please go to the official information channel. This what I mean is, uh, I think the communication ministry has set up an official telegram for disseminating information about COVID-19 and everything else. So you guys should follow that channel. Uh, the Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health has a telegram also? Uh, no, on the website. Like website ah, so the Ministry Twitter. of Health is good to, to mm. know about what's going on with regards to COVID-19 in general. Uh, the Majlis Kesamatan Negara, National Security Council, also has an official Telegram channel. You can check all that out on our website. We'll put that up so that it'll be an easy resource for you to find. Okay, so it's very important that you get the the official source and official information. Be like the be like the know it all. You know, um, snuff out. I I find it very satisfying when I get to snuff out fake news. I love doing that. You mean, <laughs> when people say some nonsense, you just cry yeah. on the spot. When people say bullshit, it's like, pow, that's wrong. This is the facts. Boom, 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 boom. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm done. I do that in all of my WhatsApp groups. Uh, it's a very satisfying hobby for me. I think you guys should try it out. So, check out all, like for my mm, uh, taman, you know, I, I, I put out information. Sometimes I'm not right, sometimes I'm wrong and the information get updated. I don't mind. I put out the right information and say, okay, this is wrong. Do that. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Just make sure that your information is correct so that everybody is informed properly. Um, that's very important also, okay, guys? All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for me for this episode. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Alex? Or mm. anything else you want to highlight? I think that's about it. And of course, as usual, uh, maintain good hygiene, wash your hands often, 20 seconds at least with soap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't need the fancy stuff. If you use no regular soap, it'll work as well. Make yeah. sure the duration counts 20 yeah. seconds. Um, <laughs> keep a good distance, yeah. even indoors with your family members, at least one meter. Yeah. yeah one meter. Yep. So, uh, Alex brought up a good point. You don't need to sanitize, you don't need sanitizer. 
You only do if you don't have water. But if you have water, wash your hand with soap. 30 seconds to one minute. If you want to know how long 30 seconds and one minute or one minute is, try to sing happy birthday <laughs> to yourself when you wash your hands. Make sure you wash in between and everything. Um, I think a lot of people know that already, but keep reminding people to do that because sometimes we forget. Stop trying to touch your face so many times. Uh, I've stopped shaking hands with people. I've uh, just do the elbow bump. I think that's way cooler. Or just a hand wave will do <laughs> if you want to. Um, and uh, Alex also mentioned uh, you don't need to panic buy. All this, right, just puts unnecessary strain on a very well uh, uh, maintained, well uh, uh, oil and efficient machinery already. There's enough supply to meet the demand. But if it gets disrupted, not disrupted, but it gets much like kacau lah, you know, when people start buying more than they need then it disturbs the, the system. So let's, let's again try to be responsible Malaysians. Let's work together. We're in this together. And if we do this right, two weeks is all we need. Guys, two weeks is all we need. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay? Please, let's do that. All right, this is me, Amin. This is Alex. And uh, that's pretty much it from, uh, let's, from us uh, in this episode of Let's Talk About. As always, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up if you like this episode. Your comments, feedbacks and suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. We love to hear from you and we love to know how we can make this uh, show better. If you are a podcast listener, we are also available on podcast, so be sure to look out for us on Spotify, Switcher, Anchor and everything else. Uh, and, and every other uh, popular uh, podcast platform out there, we are there. So search for soyjichow.com and look for, that, for the show. Let's talk about it. If you're listening to us on podcast, be sure to give us a really good review, five star if you like, because uh, it helps us a lot in making better podcasts for you guys. All right, that's pretty much it. This is Amin. This is Alex. And thanks for watching, guys. See you guys later. Keep safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, okay? And stay away from people. <laughs> stay at home. Bye. <laughs>